Yeah. Oh, well, then you're a blaspheming, lying Hitler. Hitler. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then you're Hitler. You understand? You're Hitler. That's what I'm saying. Well, but we both know that I'm not Hitler, so why Why doesn't your God not know that I'm not Hitler? <laughs> like, not the point. Not the point. Those are words that you've allowed me to apply to you now, so now you have to act like you're Hitler. Come on, now, put it on, I'm mustache. <laughs> <laughs> put it on. Here's your little hat. Oh, uh, that's Charlie Chaplin. Here's your little Hitler hat. <laughs> God awful movie 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian Cinema because we've actually missed Ray Comfort and we're not sure how we feel about that. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting to my immediate left is my good friend Heath and right. Heath, welcome back, sir. Thank you, thank you. I'm not sure I feel comfortable doing this atheist show anymore but i'll ask forgiveness when we're done should be fine. well i gotta say before you watched ray's movie you were unhealthy and now you're healthier so huh. there is that Proof positive and sitting 81 miles to my right of course is my bad friend eli bosnick eli how are you this fine afternoon sir i'm pretty fantastic i gotta tell you i'm real convinced by this series of stock footage and then ray bothering teenagers <laughs> so that's pretty much that could have been the title right there stock footage and ray bothering teenagers but it isn't so tell us heath what will we be breaking down today all right uh we watched eli doesn't know where soho is <laughs> so, um it's also we watched, whatever, that's a documentary know where it's Zoe um is. it's about how eli lives in new york city doesn't know where soho is no big deal we also watched <laughs> uh, uh, the atheist delusion <laughs> it's the story of ray comfort just harassing thousands of people, I imagine, until he found eight inarticulate atheists to interview. So the part we get to see is uh, Ray Ray explaining to these eight people how DNA was invented 6,000 years ago by a ghost while I dreamed about cutting his tongue out with Occam's razor. <laughs> <laughs> And by the way, if you notice that quick breathing in thing that uh, Heath was doing to power through the opening, regardless of Eli wanting to talk, get used to that. Ray will do it, too. So, <laughs> Eli, tell us, how bad was this movie? Well, Heath doesn't know where Soho is. Keep uh, saying it. Keep saying it. Each time you say it, each time you say it, Andrew litigates it and it's, it's more and more of a lie. It's fine. <laughs> Andrew keeps having to fight himself. He's in fighting a trial himself by and he's come out on the side. I just of, love the thought of all of these people who are looking back into the archives going, where, where did I miss something about oh, Soho? No, I'm guys, get it's that one. not, it's like, it's not like puzzle in a thunderstorm. The, the mystery is never revealed in the archives. <laughs> I'll reveal it to you to ask me at reason cut. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you love stock footage, but you hate logic, you will love this movie. No I feel shit. like Ray watched the hypnotism scene from Zoolander and was like, I could do that. It just, I'm just going to switch out the Prime Minister of Japan for Jesus. <laughs> Here you go. Nailed Micronesia. it. It's a movie. <laughs> yeah, I, I, oh God, I feel like in a lot of ways this movie contends for you know, worst shit we've ever sat through. I, I, I'm not saying it is the worst shit that we've ever sat through, just that it's a legitimate contender. So before we get going, I want to kind of give everybody an idea of where it falls. Uh, so tell me, where do you guys think this movie ranks in terms of like, you know, just being hard to sit through? Like, like for me, it's, it's right below international gorillas and right above matter of faith. Hmm. Uh, it's actually. Near the bottom for me. I enjoyed all the colorful pictures. There were yeah, a lot of colorful. Fun. Absolutely. And I was going to say the same thing. This is actually relatively easy to watch because there are, str this movie is made for people for whom science will get boring. So there are strategic, like, look, a fuzzy bunny pictures throughout this movie so that Ray's audience aren't like, I don't know what this faggot DNA stuff's supposed to be. <laughs> Go. Boo. <laughs> All right, so where would you say it ranks in terms of making you want to lash out violently? Hmm. Um, for, for me, it's I would say top of the list. I'm just just throwing. I don't want to like influence anyone's vote. All right, well, okay. I'm almost there. Um, I'd say it's right below Vaxed, and uh, <laughs> and also the left-handed shortstop thing in Kirk Cameron's baseball movie. <laughs> Right below those. See, I was going to go, it's just below Matter of Faith, but it's above Loving the Batman. Okay, all right. You know what I'm well, saying? I yeah. like a nice romance. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. How about where it ranks in terms of presenting its case in a convincing way? Hmm. Um, I'm going to say N slash A. <laughs> <laughs> I ranked it right above the Mormon musical and right below what the bleep do we know? Oh, see, I, <laughs> I rated it just above Vax, but just below what the bleep do we know? All right, all right. All right. So we're close mm, though. Similar. Our rankings similar. are close if you're yeah, playing yeah. fantasy Christian movie. Um, you know, okay. And so finally, where would it rank in terms of, uh, like Pavlovian saliva response? I, come on. I'm always hungry. Don't be mean about it. <laughs> It's all those amazing recipes from blueapron.com <laughs> forward slash scathing. Got it. Three free meals. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Eli, you see, now I'm going to have to like bleep that out in the, uh, in the Patreon, <laughs> the Patreon. version. Here, or wait, something here's something for the patrons. Not ads. Not ads. <laughs> Look at this not being ads. <laughs> We'll I'll copy and paste that over. Thanks. Appreciate that, Eli. Um, so is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Uh, we covered it slightly, but can I go with best worst use of a Shutterstock account? Movie was brought to you by Shutterstock. Because we, you know, we sit around in the quiet moments and we're like, man, wouldn't it be amazing to make not another Christian movie? And we really like think about like what it would be about. We throw ideas back and forth. And here this whole time we've been thinking about scripts and sets and actors. All we needed was a Shutterstock account and to bother people who couldn't argue as well as us. Isn't that crazy? (laughs) Turns out you can do it on a budget. Uh, Heath, any nominations? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna say best worst forgetting to cut the part when Lawrence Krauss makes you look like an idiot. And you leave it in. It's bad. Here's the thing about this. Okay, so Ray has a bit in this movie where he talks to Lawrence Krauss, and you've got to figure this is the the moment from that entire interview that makes him look the least stupid. Yeah, <laughs> which right, is like, rough because he gets <laughs> judo thrown <laughs> and shits himself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, and by the way, I want to throw this out too in, in the best worst, the most ephemeral homophobia and Islamophobia that we've ever encountered. There are just constantly moments of this, like we're, as we're going to the end of the scene where he's just like, and eh, no, you started all the wars. Yeah, you absolutely. Know? He works it in at the end and he talks very quickly, but like, we can still hear the term fag, Ray. We know yeah. what you're calling. <laughs> right. And faggots. What? Sorry, what was that? No, I was just saying, you totally convinced now. Have I made you think? Have I made you think? <laughs> look into my eyes, look into my eyes, and sleep. <laughs> and wake up a Christian. <laughs> yeah, like I said, we'll point them out when they happen, but there are plenty of them. Well, obviously, we've been waiting a long time to break down a Ray Comfort flick on this show, so we're going to take a few moments for skits and ads and stuff, and when we come back, we'll dig into all the tortured logic and malicious editing that is The Atheist Delusion. Not all ingredients are created equal and blue apron ones. You to eat well, it's easy, delicious, sustainable, and nutritious, and healthy. And cooking with family is great bonding of heirloom tomatoes or fancy ramen. The atmosphere sweet, cooking veggies or meat, and easy to follow recipes for less than. Eat good and eat 
wealthy, even if you're not wealthy, blue apron, a better way to cook. Hi, I'm Ray Comfort, and this is the Spider-Man Delusion. We talk to real ace spider man Do you think Spider-Man is real? No. No. Absolutely not. No, I don't. And through conversation, show them the error of their ways. Right, but don't you see birds and trees and your eyes and your larynx and your tongue and your foot and your toes and the food all put together so perfectly to find out that Spider-Man does whatever a spider can? You hear what I'm saying? I mean, I hear... The, I hear the words that you're saying. Nailed it. No, 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 no. I mean, I don't agree. I just, I mean, like, in a literal sense, I do hear what you're saying. Right, gonna, gonna cut that part. Order now and get it four full months before we take all the DVDs and throw them in the garbage or give them away or whatever they do. Maybe say it with me? Uh, Spider-Man. Spider-Man? Is that what you want me to... See? The gift of Spider-Man. <sighs> the Spider-Man delusion. Because I'm better at arguing than teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to start things off getting all indignant about the fact that we're all just things on a rock floating in space. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> This movie begins with Ray being huffy that we're not... Magic things floating through water? Like, what, what does, well, what but- is his alternate <laughs> option? Like, he doesn't say, like, oh, we're immortal angels floating through Laffy Taffy. I don't know what the opposite of this thing he's upset about is. Well, right, like, like, you know, you can look at a diamond and say, well, that's just, you know, carbon atoms arranged a certain way and shit. You don't get pissed off at the diamond for it afterwards. Ba 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 ba. It's terrifying. The music's ridiculous at this point, too. Um, it's basically, uh, I'm gonna murder you with this cello bow. <laughs> is the music that was happening. And while that's happening, they literally show us, like, Ominous cuts of a DNA strand and a finch. Back to back. Like, that's the evil thing that's happening. This should be and some dice being rolled. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. This should be the intro to a movie about a super bug, not something that's going to try to convince you to believe in God. <laughs> right. And what's amazing is this is probably the most on point stock footage we will ever get in this film. Like, at least you can see what they're going for here. So we get this ominous, like, throw a bunch of shit at you so you think you're going to watch a real movie kind of opening. And then, of course, we get the Big Bang and then a bald eagle. And basically, <laughs> the, the, the message here is, oh, look, this is a documentary. You can tell because it has animals. Right, yeah. And yeah. R- raise list for making a movie. Buy stock footage, talk into microphone, profit. <laughs> That's where you really recognize it's going to be a lot of this. And look, this is where we do a quick flash through of everyone being like, I'm an atheist. I'm an atheist. Yeah, I'd call myself an atheist. Atheist, atheist, atheist. And look, I know we usually make fun of the physical appearance of some of the people in these movies. And I know that these people are on our side and they're probably very nice people. So we shouldn't do it as much as I'm about to. But atheists, if, can we just all agree if we ever end up talking to Ray that we not have the silliest hair and outfits possible? Maybe we take <laughs> our purple hair and our Hot Topic t-shirt off for the interview <laughs> with the guy who makes movies about us. I'm just saying, dress up, sport it up a little. So, yeah, yeah, so we meet, like, David the Atheist and Mr. Jowls the Atheist. He he just finds a bunch of random atheists, and I think with one exception, they are all 19 years old or younger. Right, and they all have big, shit-eating, I-get-to-fuck-with-Ray-Comfort-grins on their face. Which, of course, everyone would have, except they're not good at it, and they end up praying with him. Like, it's, you you watch, it's like the kids from Bible Club, the movie with Stephen Baldwin, where they're like, oh, watch me get Stephen Baldwin. All right, I take Christ as my personal savior. What happened? (laughs) This didn't go well. I thought I was gonna get you. Yeah, he keeps fucking it up. It, like, he's trying to make him out to be evil, but it's like, okay, what happened to make you an atheist? And the person's like, I started thinking about stuff. He's like, oh, all right. Yeah. Fuck, yeah. All right. Don't recommend well, that. We're going to keep that. We're going to keep that, but moving on. Uh, why are you an atheist? Not enough evidence to believe in God. All right. Fuck. All right. Uh, what if I molested no, one of you right cancer, now? mom? <laughs> and there's actually a montage of people being like, 
Yes, I'm atheist, as if that's like fucking typical. Yes, they're atheists. <laughs> they say yes. So well, weird. And and there's also this montage here, right, where where he's asking all of them, like, if you saw evidence to confirm that God existed, would you change your mind? And all of them are saying yes. Now, of course, this is his way of, like, trapping them in. Oh, I've got them reeled in. Now they have to look at my evidence. But I would love to just contrast this with asking the same question of Christians. We would automatically win the argument since they would be saying no. <laughs> right. You know, but where, whereas with atheists, even if you go up to fucking menthol Ronald McDonald and ask him this question, he gets it right. <laughs> that was one of the guys. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. So, it, so yeah, so we get this and then we get to the first argument. Now, I assumed that this would be the first in a series of arguments that we would get throughout the movie. This is going to be approximately 26 minutes of the hour long runtime. This is the look at this book. Are you telling me it just created itself out of nothing argument? Yeah. And and to so, be clear, he starts this by literally handing people a multicolored picture book, rough that Ray carries that around everywhere. But let's say it's just <laughs> an example. Let's say it's not the only thing he's read. It's fine. It's fine. Uh and he's like, Yeah, you see that book? You see that book? Do you believe that book just fell out of the sky? And and they're like, no, no, I don't. And he's like, that's that would be pretty stupid. Now, what if I told you that book was created by a wizard? That makes a lot more sense. Don't <laughs> just say, yeah, bring in. But yeah, the whole thing is like, if I told you this book just fell out and came together randomly, wouldn't you think that's silly? But then he's going to transition from that to a literal metaphor for a book in a moment. Like, he's literally... Yeah. That's like people being like, time flies, and then him holding a clock and being like, are you ready? We're going to spice! <laughs> <laughs> well, right, right. Because, right, comfort, okay, so, away! <laughs> <laughs> right, because we transition immediately from that to the complexity of DNA, right? So, now, I, I have to point out as we're doing this, okay... He is very clearly on college campuses most of the time, which means there's a biology department nearby. Right. <laughs> he could be finding out about DNA. Exactly, right. But instead, he's talking to all of the dumbest kids he can find, and then, of course, cutting out the top nine-tenths of it until he has these fo folks left over. Well, yeah, but they're, they're not even that stupid. Like, several times, he asks one, one, he's like, what's DNA? And they're like, oh, it's a uh, deoxyribonucleic acid. And he's like, oh. You, you're ready for that one. Uh, <laughs> we cut? And ask a stupid looking kid is. And, th and then he asks again, it's like, oh, it's genetic code. All right, fuck. Let's go somewhere else. It's fine. Dude. We, and like, didn't cut those either. Kept Lawrence Krauss too. I'm going to hold someone else's hecky sack hostage. <laughs> <laughs> Give it back, Crocodile Dundee. Come on, man. <laughs> I don't like it. So, but where he's going with this ultimately is there are more letters in DNA than there are in books. And if books couldn't <laughs> exist without a designer, how could the book of life exist? Mm. He even, even says, you know, this has been called the instruction book of life. The instruction book of life. Yeah, no, this is the argument from why are there still infinite monkeys. Right. It's fantastic. <laughs> Genius, yeah, and that's right. literally the transition he makes is like, this has been called a book. You just agreed a book wouldn't appear out of nowhere. Therefore, DNA yeah. couldn't have evolved over millions of years. I see no difference. Ray out. Drops the mic. <laughs> <laughs> but also, it's a tiny little moment, but I love it so much. So in order to fill this movie, Ray lists things rapid fire constantly. He's like, hey, a monkey, a cat, a dog, your red hair, your brown hair, your blue hair, your tall, your short, your fat, your murderer, your rapist, your brat. <laughs> like he just lists a million things so that they're like, oh, whoa, bro, give me my hockey sack. Stop saying words. <laughs> like I get the tactic, but like he does it constantly. <laughs> and in this first scene, he's explaining how cool DNA is. And he goes, DNA is what gives you blonde hair. And it shows a picture of a person with blonde hair uh, or brown hair and it shows a person with brown hair and then he goes and red hair and it shows a picture of an orangutan which I <laughs> found very offensive <laughs> figured the Irish people weren't uh, offended enough by right. the leprechaun very in the hood very yeah, exactly. triggered he also he says, or oh, the color of your feathers if you were a bird. And I wrote in my notes, I'm glad Ray didn't leave out the birds that are watching this movie. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> or did he just see a Disney cartoon one time and thought, fuck, they watch TV too. Well, better save those souls. <laughs> 
Yeah, at this point, like, Ray starts explaining what DNA is to me, and I figured his tactic is he was trying to convince me of Christianity by convincing me I had died and gone to their hell at this point, <laughs> because Ray Comfort was explaining how DNA worked to myself. So then we move on to, like, but basically we don't move on. We, we, we're we going to stay with the same argument. We're just really going to drill in, because this is where he starts going on to, like, ask everybody, like, well, what do you think of the mentality of somebody who would believe that a book just fell together you'd think they were pretty stupid huh right and you see people being like i that seems like a multi-phase question that i can't answer like yes or no to because you're not asking me about the thing i believe you're asking me about a fake thing that i don't you're like it's like yeah hey, how how hard do you think you could punch this straw man i've built <laughs> i don't know man pretty hard yeah, and he actually asks, like, did DNA happen by accident? That's one of his direct questions. And, like, he thinks the word accident doesn't exist. So you can't really answer that for Ray Comfort. <laughs> Crazy person. Right, and and so often the argument that he's trying to make in this movie really does boil down to something that fucking stupid, where it's like, you have so misconstrued what you're trying to say or what you think DNA is or what you think evolution means that it's not possible to answer you anymore. That look like that people are giving you, that's, it's they're not stumped because you've just presented really good evidence. They're just <laughs> stumped. You understand how DNA is a little ladder where the angels crawl up and they <laughs> deliver messages to your muscles to let them know. You know how your DNA is that? And they're like, uh... Uh, and he's like, yeah, I know. It's hard to take in all at once. In a second, I'm going to get real close to your face with this. <laughs> I'm going to get so fucking close to his face with this microphone. I'm going to make Kirk Cameron's anus look like a distant memory. <laughs> and DNA did happen by accident. Right? I mean, my parents told me that's how I was born. <laughs> God forgot to pull out. And there I was. Well, and, and that's the other thing, too, is like, okay, by accident, like, I, I'm, I'm writing in my notes here, like, gee, I wonder when Ray is going to debunk the clay world hypothesis and the RNA world hypothesis, <laughs> yeah, you know? Exactly. <laughs> For fuck's sake. And, and that's the other thing is that, again, uh, again, we're getting this, like, there's no difference between we don't definitively know and we have no fucking clue. Everybody gets to make up their own shit. Well, and also things that we definitely do know. At one point, he's like, uh, DNA can't create DNA, right? That's stupid. Yes, it fucking oh, well, can. Of course it can. I literally made that happen in my <laughs> high school biology class during a lab. <laughs> Replicated it. Right, because right. You, but you would never be able to answer Ray Comfort with that point because he would start listing animals at you. Like, honestly, who but a child randomly lists animals like that? I called it the speak and spell defense throughout my notes here. <laughs> oh, yeah? Oh, yeah? Well, that, that's a great point you've made in this debate there. No illusions. However, shh. The cow says, boo. <laughs> All right, so I think it's pretty clear. I'm going to get Clarence Gilead up here to jerk up into a box of cornflakes and we'll be ready to go. Also, tiny moment here, but again, like it's the subtle moments with Ray that, that make me love him so much. <laughs> In the middle of very clearly twisting a point to get a very specific answer that he knows he's misconstruing, he goes, look, I don't want to win an argument. I just want you to concede that you're wrong. <laughs> right. Look, I don't want to win an I'm not here to debate you. I'm here to prove that I am right and you are wrong and have you admit that in a movie which I will use to convince other people. <laughs> he literally <laughs> He admits that, and he thinks he, he he's he's acting like it makes him like less disingenuous, right? He's like, I'm not here to debate you, you know, because I'm not changing my fucking mind. <laughs> Yeah, you can do whatever the fuck you want. Honestly, look at this. I stopped believing in fingers, and they're fucking gone. They're fucking gone. Show them to me. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Look me in my heart. You see it? It's all crazy. It's crazy all the way fucking down. I don't know what I did in my 20s. I don't know what I did in my teens. There's a homeless guy buried in New Zealand somewhere. We're not thinking about it. The truth of the matter is I'm burying it under all this fucking crazy. Now, I've got some trick questions for you. Have you ever yeah, seen right. a moose, a bird, a donkey, and a rabbit? <laughs> <laughs> and so now it's time to move on to the are you saying that nothing created everything argument? Now, <sighs> I, I want to point out, okay, so this is all, basically this entire movie is going to be like man on the street footage. And like you know, like Jay Leno made his living walking around doing this and finding people who thought the Spanish-American War was a rap battle. 
You, you know, like <laughs> like this is this is a proven way of finding the dumbest possible goddamn people. But even then, he can't really find many really truly dumb people to represent anyway but but it, the, the, but the point being like he starts walking up to other people and demanding that they explain how the universe came into existence like just random guy on the street cosmology yeah. and, and he he says it in a way that we the movie viewer are supposed to connect can dna replicate itself or isn't dna complicated with how did the universe get created which is like me saying how does the polarity of water worked what what is love, baby? Don't hurt me. <laughs> connect. I know they're both things you don't understand, but they are not connected by anything except your ignorance of them as concepts. Also, yeah, yeah. He thinks nothing created a magical warlock who can build universes. That is so much more goddamn complicated than G A T C. It's four letters. How hard is that? Mm, Unbelievable. Sorry. So misspelled God Heath hate to correct you. And <laughs> chicken. <laughs> the chicken says <laughs> Nailed him. Yeah. I knew I should have brought this with my colour picture book. <laughs> so if I'm summing up this whole argument from him in this little section, he's saying basically, you're an atheist, so you believe nothing created everything. Now I'm gonna beat the shit out of this scarecrow. C <laughs> C no brain do 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 do. That's yes. what's happening. <laughs> That could be the whole film if it absolutely if we actually had to get this episode out in three minutes, that that would be the episode. Yeah, <laughs> he then transitions that to Richard Dawkins thinks nothing created oh, anything, <laughs> and there's this amazing moment. We're gonna get to it of like his whole Dawkins attack, which is phenomenal. But uh-huh. there's this amazing moment. One of the smart kids, yes, who actually gives good answers the whole time. He never gets stumped. Uh, he goes. Do you like Richard Dawkins? And he gives the perfect atheism who is aware of Dawkins' entire career answer, which is like, <laughs> ah, be more specific. <laughs> do I like the selfish gene or do I like his Twitter? Those are, I need to know how you mean that. <laughs> and I gotta say, like, Ultimately, if you really wanted to like make your point by making Richard Dawkins look bad, it's not really that hard to do. You know, you would have to do some ad hominem like, oh, his argument is false because he was an asshole to this guy on Twitter kind of stuff. But it, you couldn't fuck it up more royally than Ray does by immediately presenting Ray or uh, uh, Richard Dawkins across from the guy representing Ray Comfort's side in this battle. <laughs> George fucking Pell George <laughs> Cardinal George Pell the child molestation covering and allegedly child molesting Cardinal who hid and was like I'm sick that's why I can't come to trial come home <laughs> Cardinal Pell George Pell and the way we're presenting this we're watching Dawkins give uh, no context to his comments we're just watching him try to give context but with no sound yeah right while ray comfort is dubbed over the top and then one sentence from dawkins at the end yeah, of it. it's literally it's literally his mouth moving while ray's like richard dawkins is probably like blow 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 look at me oh, i'm english science blow 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 i bet i'm good oh my pubes are all gray and wispy gray and balding and wispy and that's why nothing came from anything look at that weird right <laughs> Right, Fucking and then, moron. So, so, so they give him just a conclusion where he's like, where he says, "So that's how nothing can come from." Everything. And the audience kind of giggles at him or whatever. And he's like, "What's silly about that?" And starts explaining why that's not silly. But they mute him again. That's like all the fucking... Not only do they mute him, but he goes on a monologue about like, now while Richard grew telekinetic powers and killed that audience, you can see how ridiculous everyone thought it was. Well, right, because he's saying, he's like, well, clearly after that question, uh, Richard Dawkins was rattled. You can trust me on that. You don't need to hear any of this rattled stuff. Doesn't he look rattled? He looks rattled, doesn't he? Please don't YouTube that debate. It doesn't go that way. <laughs> I, I did, and I had to pray for hours just to get all that truth out of my brain because <laughs> Pell goes down hard. Pell, Pell goes down hard for someone who facilitates the fucking of kids. Like, I'm telling you, he goes down hard for a kitty fucker. You know? For a kitty fucker, he goes down hard. It's no fun. It's no fun to watch. <laughs> this is also where Ray gets into the uh, the initial cause argument. Yeah. But 
Here's the thing. Ray Comfort doesn't believe in a pre-god, right? So he's an atheist about that. Like, right. what, that kind of interesting. And he's basically saying, like, you know, atheists are wrong because it's scientifically impossible for nothing to cause everything. And are, are we playing with scientifically possible as a rule? Yeah, right. <laughs> with, is that? Because that... The whole rest of the thing doesn't work, really. Yeah, let's 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 just get that out of the way up front. And also, by the way, have you ever in your life seen a video that's all like man on the street shit that is this little of the man on the street talking and this much of the guy behind the microphone talking at them while they <laughs> nod? <laughs> also, I uh, never heard the argument from. Tim Allen agrees with me. <laughs> Even <laughs> Tim Allen. Me. Former Coke dealer hack comedian agrees with me. So there's a God. Must there's be. also just this, incre- again, I know tiny moments are really what I'm focusing on. There's this great moment where he's very clearly trying to have a goodwill hunting, it's not your fault moment with this guy where he's like, you're, right. you're not just a blob of nothing. You're wonderful. <laughs> hey, hey, Daniel, you're loved. You love Daniel. It's going to be okay. But Daniel's just like, you're fucking crazy. Why do you smell so much like sweat? And he's like, you don't know. There was a fat Jew earlier. Lick me up and down. I can't stop seeing the look in his eyes. Pure joy. Pure joy. When my son was born and when this motherfucker licked me. I don't know how to deal with it. (laughs) And then we're on to Lawrence Krauss. And I, I, I love, first of all, I love the way he introduces Krauss because he's like, in June of 2016, I interviewed Lawrence Krauss. And he kind of says, like, theoretical physicist. You know, so it's just a theory. <laughs> but he actually says, in, as he's setting this up, he says, now, unfortunately, I was on, I was limited to only asking questions. But I'm like, what were... <laughs> Were, were you going to lick him? I mean, what did, what was the other thing you wanted to be able to do? I wanted to play charades, but everyone really <laughs> shut that idea down right away. I wanted to ask him statements. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, that's exactly it. I wanted to preach at him for 45 minutes. Uh. And... So, Ray, baby, look, here, I know you listen to all of these. I know you listen to all the everythings to make sure that it's okay and safe and stuff. Ray, don't. <laughs> Here's the thing. I would have given a way, way worse answer than the snowflake thing that Lawrence gave you, okay? (laughs) That was brutal. You need to not let smart people talk in your movies, bud. (laughs) Look, I get what you're doing, and you know what? For what you do, you do it pretty well. But this was this was not good. You gotta fire that editor, Ray. He did not (laughs) represent you well here, man. Because Lawrence Crown, here's the thing, and me and Heath were talking about this after we watched the movie. I didn't know that snowflake example, but the snowflake example he gives is fucking awesome. He's like, yeah, DNA is super complicated, and it really would look like it's created. But snowflakes are super complicated, and they're just made by the natural laws of how water works. If I can tell you how water works, I can make you a snowflake, and we all agree snowflakes aren't created. And Ray just stares at him and cuts the camera away. It's like, <laughs> it, was, him, huh? it was dusty. In here is what it is. It's dusty. How do you explain this guy with a flask of color changing liquid? That uh. we're about to show you? Yeah, and it was super fun just watching Lawrence Krauss like be angry here. Yeah, Ray Comfort's like, oh, um, so are you open to evidence? And Krauss is like, that is our word. That is our word. <laughs> You can't say that. Well, but here's the thing. Okay, so when we first see Lawrence Krauss, he is very, very clearly frustrated. Like, so you know that there was like 35 minutes before this of him going, okay, okay, but why would they still have monkeys then? <laughs> why would those monkeys still Damn have it. monkeys? And, 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 and so like you can tell by this time, like he's like, he started this interview with more hair, but by the end of it, <laughs> even by the end of it, cause Lawrence Krauss is a really brilliant fucking dude, you know? So no matter how dumb Ray repackages his question, Lawrence Krauss is able to get out of it. So he, he makes this point about snowflakes, which again, yeah, like you said, perfect example here to use um and and it's so good that ray rather than trying to debunk it or refute it there in the moment just cuts to a whole thing where he's like yeah that thing they said about the snowflake was pretty smart huh well we've got some pictures to show you so that you won't remember (laughs) that he said that now here's the refutation he tries to use the snowflake does not contain information you see how that makes it different the dna 
As a matter of fact, uh, he, in, in order to try to make this work, he says, you know, the, the, the DNA molecule contains specified information, which is not a thing. Define specified information. My fucking spell check is sure you mean specific. <laughs> That's not a fucking thing. Yeah, his reputation is basically like, oh, he sure, but like one snowflake, but DNA is like a million snowflakes and everyone knows the <laughs> laws of polarity haven't created a fuck. There have been a million snowflakes. <laughs> God, that's a really good counterexample to what I'm doing. <laughs> What's more complicated than, than a million snowflakes? Um, DNA. Uh, there you go, right? You found it. <laughs> editing this section out? Yep. That's it. Yeah, right. And all the sobbing. All the sobbing as well. Take that out. <laughs> I was really shocked that they kept this in because he so clearly is getting his ass handed to him here. I, maybe he already paid for the s- snowflake stock footage. He and- also tries to counter him with Bill Gates. He goes, Bill Gates, who 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 is an atheist, but never mind, <laughs> says that DNA is also very complex. Yeah, huh? exactly. I'm sure. I'm sure Bill Gates would agree that DNA is far too complex not to have been <laughs> shed out by Jesus. <laughs> huh? Pretty sure that guy who single handedly works towards eliminating polio is on my side of the field. <laughs> Yeah, he even says at one point, the, the origin is clearly supernatural. I'm like, by definition, that can't actually be true, even if I grant all your precepts. Um, but also, this is one of these great little, like, you know, just a side of homophobia in the film things where he, where he's just talking. He, once again, he's listing animals, and he's like, you know, and God created the giraffes and the turtles and the sharks and the fleas and the dogs and the cats and the humans, both male and female, and all of the other living things. Like, why, Ray? Why did you have to point that out? (laughs) Some with penises, some without penises. (laughs) And nothing in between, Ari. Ari Stillman. (laughs) The fucking school shooter and look a weirdo. (laughs) (laughs) And now we get the atheist nightmare itself. The chicken or the egg question. Oh, and it's so good. The music here is Ray sneaking around behind Aaron Ra. I wanted so badly (laughs) to just Aaron to be at a burrito stand somewhere and Ray to be like, <laughs> in a bush behind him. Well, I love too that like he finds a group of people that agree with him, and these are you know I, I I apologize to people who have southern accents. I know that the southern accent doesn't actually make you any dumber, and that that's just a cultural stereotype or whatever. But the first people that he comes across that actually agree with his argument are the most shit kicking drunken rednecks you can imagine. Well, that's a good question. I ain't never done thought about that because the chicken have to lay the egg, but the egg had to come from a chicken, and the chicken had to come from an egg. Holy shit man you done blew my mind right right back to adam which i'm like wait i thought we were interviewing atheists and he's like no nah, i got some other people too <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> when you say right back to adam and the other person goes yes that person very certainly not an atheist <laughs> probably yeah <laughs> well but 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 see that's the thing is that like you could you you could actually get a biologist to nod along with you because sometimes you would use that as shorthand, right? You know, all the way right. back to Adam as the, the back to the first human. And but. again, there's literally a professor of that in the building next to everyone. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, he Just went with this clear. shirtless kid at Coachella instead, but he was gonna do Neil deGrasse Tyson. He was, he was. Just Neil was <laughs> no, busy. He, he meant to. You and you can tell because he uses some stock footage of him in a second. But so here's the argument, and of course we'll remember this one from a matter of faith. The, the the correct argument is that the chicken came first because we really haven't beaten this initial cause concept into the ground uh, enough yet because the egg would have had to be fertilized. What it would it have had to been fertilized by? Now, again, he could have thrown this one to Lawrence Krauss, in which case he would have said a Tyrannosaurus because the modern day <laughs> right, chicken exactly. is a direct descendant <laughs> of the Tyrannosaurus. You know, the, the eggs predate chickens by millions and millions of years. Jesus and had one of those as a pet. Yeah, absolutely. yeah, exactly. Duh. Uh, so you're saying every chicken on earth is millions of years old? Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Such a stupid argument. Well, and that is literally like he his arguments are not more intelligent than that one. Well, um, he do, he does ask. Um, well, then how did air evolve? Which was, which was pretty <laughs> what? Good. He's obviously never seen a transitional air fossil. It's no big deal. But <laughs> right. Well, and then we go through this. Point tired bullshit of like oh but before it had eyes how did it see you know like like what what good is a half evolved eye we're gonna trudge through that ground again 
Which is so weird for him to point out since the evolution of the eye is so clearly spelled out. Right. Like, there are things that it is harder to see the pathway of, but, like, why light-sensitive cells on a fish at the bottom of the ocean are useful leads to an eye is a pretty clear path. So why throw that out there? It's like, I don't know, why would you even need penetration And if I were talking to my girlfriend? Like, it just doesn't... <laughs> <laughs> I know the answer. <laughs> Well, that's the thing. Like, that's why they need to change up their examples from time to time. Because yes, we actually do know almost every step in this process, and there are all these remnants in 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 the evolution of the eye where you can see. Oh, yeah, evolution sure fucked it up here. If it was intelligently designed, it wouldn't be backwards now, would it? Wouldn't have a blind spot right in the middle of it like that. Whoops. But then, but instead of dwelling on that, he just moves on to like, oh yeah, and how did it breathe before its lungs evolved? But that doesn't, you don't, Uh, and as soon as somebody starts to say, well, you don't understand, then he starts listing animals again, so that you can And he really hits it with the giraffes. He says giraffes a dozen times in this movie. At this point, I literally had written in my notes, this movie brought to you by giraffes. Go to (laughs) theatheistdelusion.com forward slash giraffes to get three free giraffe meals. (laughs) (laughs) Not ads, not ads, not a joke about ads. Terrible example of an intelligently designed thing. Right. <laughs> Horrible. Well, okay, I shit you not. I did the math at this point. We are currently 21 minutes into this movie in our breakdown. This is the sixth time he has listed animals. Every three and a half minutes, he lists animals. So I just just to put that in your fucking mind of how, how just how frequently we're dealing with this shit. And then, like, we get the... um the animals hanging out in pairs montage. Yes, the, pe- yeah. the people who watch Ray's movie got bored. And so we have a sassy French music with animals that are straight. Look at these animals. <laughs> None of them are gay. Do not be gay. These animals are not gay. Trust oh. me, these animals are all straight. <laughs> I wanted so bad for them to accidentally show like a cartoon skunk like Pepe Le Pew fucking a cat. <laughs> like, God, God, no, hold on. It's thing. okay. He's a man and she's a woman. Go for it. Just make sure he gives her the right How to How does half her. a stripe evolve? Well, <laughs> I don't know. It's like half the full one. You're an idiot. Uh, well, but I, I do love too how G rated this, this, like these platonic animal relationships are fucking hilarious. I also feel like this should count as the seventh time he listed animals. But to give you an idea, okay, it's not like these animals fit into some point he's making, right? He just starts showing animals so you'll look at his, at the screen again. And this is how bad it gets. This montage literally ends with kittens hugging in a hamper. I like that part. <laughs> Kept me going. It, it's the most reasonable part of the movie. <laughs> yeah, well, right, right. No, and, and and the most entertaining. So, as if we need more proof at this point, Ray moves on to his next question, and this will be the argument from the sun doesn't literally rise and mirages don't exist. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. It, it, unless he's arguing that scientists actually believe that there's really water on a sunny road down the hill there i don't see what the fuck he's getting at here can you guys help me out he's just shitting on evidence this whole thing is about how like all these people have seen evidence and evidence is bullshit literally he said any magician will tell you not to trust your eyes can't trust your eyes and i'm like you can trust your eyes it's fine Look at my right hand when I'm palming the card. You can trust your fucking eyes. <laughs> what you but, can't trust is your attention, Ray. What have you been paying attention to, Ray? <laughs> well, exactly, because look, it's not like, it's not like we figured out what mirages were by looking in our hearts, right? Like it was evidence that got us where we are. But this is also where he, he like reveals that a bunch of his on the street atheists were never atheists. They were woo god believers. Yes. Like they, like he's asking these quote unquote atheists, well, what do you think happens when you die? Oh, my energy is reabsorbed by the universe and then I'm reincarnated and I get to be with my puppy. No, you don't count. Oh, if I nod along, will you blow me after yoga class? <laughs> <laughs> like, don't get me wrong. I went to NYU, so I get it. But like, I feel like you shouldn't be in a documentary with atheists in the title. <laughs> Noel, read your M&Ms. 
<laughs> I love yeah, right, right, exactly. I love that he goes at one point somebody says, like, well, God is energy and so, and, and Ray goes, <laughs> like an energy drink? <laughs> you see, you see, that's silly. My God, on the other hand, not so He's a silly. Mad at all. wizard. He's <laughs> so mad. <laughs> also, weird moment of agreement with Ray here where he's like, you know, people want a simple good like a buffet. They just want to take certain parts and leave other parts behind. And I was like, you're damn right, Ray. You're damn right. And he was like, I just like to think about the nice bits. And I was like, there we go, Ray. Yeah, there right. There we go. Right, right. But his point here is is that you, it's not enough to just be a good person. You also have to hate fags. Yes. And eat the entire buffet, which is fucking crazy. <laughs> Who would do that? The whole point is that you, god damn it. You picked the <laughs> idiot. There's also this amazing moment. He's trying, he's doing this like, uh, God says the atheist is a fool thing, but he, I don't know why he spirals out in this way. It's in the movie and it's wonderful. He goes, you know, the Bible calls an atheist a fool, but not like a clan. Not like a fun little clan gonna make you a balloon animal. No, no, no. This is a fuck you clan. This is a <laughs> fuck you rolling red clan. Fucking clans. At this point, I was just like postulating in my notes like something happened to Ray with clowns. Dig well, yeah, deeper. Right. <laughs> Dig deeper. <laughs> or at least show up at his house dressed as a clown. But this this is where the movie takes a bit of a darker turn, too. It, 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 yes, it gets darker. Because, like, he's very clearly presenting to several of these people. And, and these are young kids. These are, like, 19, 20-year-old kids where he's like, your life sucks sometimes, doesn't it? A young person still finding his way and not really sure what you want to do. That's because you're an atheist. You know, like, right. you, you very clearly see him, that like, now preying upon whatever weakness he perceives in these people. Right, which works on everyone, by the way. Like, it, do, it it's not just an atheist thing. There's always, you are broken and the solution is X. That's just the classic con. The con for everything since ever has been, you know how it feels a little broken to be human and the person's like, yeah, it does. And it's like, I've got the solution. And it's like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be great. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's it. It's been the pitch since ever. Also, this is where he explains to them that they're an atheist because they love porn and premarital sex. And I mean, yep. look. I do love those things a lot. They're just not the cause of my atheism. It's not, it's not like I, it's not like I held the Bible in one hand and Asa Akira's biography in the other and I was like, one of these is a little rapier than the other. I've been there. Well, <laughs> I chose correctly. Well, sometimes you have to clean up, you know. And, you don't want to anyway so yeah but but like that's literally his his thing right here because he starts talking to everybody about like you know look I, you know i know i'm preaching to the choir because you secretly know i'm right and you're not admitting it because you love porn so much and, and that's like that is his actual argument and he even has people kind of like nodding along well i do love porn so that must be yeah but to be fair like one of the kids is on like a drug bender he's clearly, clearly. like candy flipping and he's like yeah totally god blow some menthol into my nose awesome <laughs> like, yeah you got that guy to agree with you congratulations he's fucking spinning poi while ray's talking to him right. hey man stay back yeah but do you admit that god exists yeah man we're all love <laughs> Well, and then he starts trotting out some, like, ridiculous for Ray comfort arguments where he's, like, saying, how could food be delicious without God? Birds are pretty, aren't they? The sun is warm, isn't it? Those are his actual arguments. He actually says at one point, he's like, think about how much radiation is coming off the sun, and there's actually just enough reaching Earth to ripen tomatoes. You know, like, like tomatoes were a thing that already existed, and they had to be just right for the sun. Like, like no, Ray, that's what your side thinks happened. Yeah. Also, birds, trees, eggs, and bacon. He, he presented that argument as well. That's <laughs> important. I think skipping. You're, you're. I feel like you were leaving out part of his argument. As well, right. No, I didn't mention bacon specifically. No. You're right. You're right. I also love here, like as though he's just trying to tee us up for it. You know, after asking somebody how much they love pornography, he says, "Am I touching a raw nerve?" He does. He literally does. <laughs> no, Ray. That's <laughs> not what you touch, Ray. Uh, it's, I'll. <laughs> I'll show you next time you show up to one of the atheist gatherings. I'll walk you through it, man. We can Dutch rudder it, and then you'll figure it out. And then you'll be on our side. <laughs> Did you ever get into dental porn? Whatever, it's fine. No, no, it's fine. <laughs> Good stuff. I love though that it, it very much seems at this point in the movie like Ray's entire motivation, his entire career, is built around the guilt that he still has about touching his winky when he was fourteen. So yeah, so basically, and then we get some Bible quotes about how. 
you know, evil people don't believe the Bible. And, and I think he, if I'm not mistaken, the argument he presents to kind of close this segment off is, you know, the Bible says we're all terrified of death. How could it possibly have known that? It's never even met you. <laughs> how would it know it. that I'm, how would it know that I'm closing myself off from other people, huh? Yeah, right. <laughs> And, and like one of the atheists even says to him, I was like, well, come on, man. None of us really know what happens to us after we die. And he goes, oh, I do. Oh, I know 100%. Well, that doesn't, but just the fact that you asserted it doesn't count. It does count because I stopped listening and now I'm going la, 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 and have my fingers in my ears. And now I'm cutting back to Stephen Avery. So it's fine. <laughs> and this is the book I gave them. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, we jump right into an advertisement for his book. Okay, so this book that he's been trotting around the whole time saying, eh, you see this book with all these lovely color photographs in it? You think this book could have just come into existence all by itself? And it's his book. So if nothing else, <laughs> he he proved that a book can come into existence without an intelligent designer. Oh, <laughs> uh, but here's here's the amazing moment. This book is all about the stuff that scientists have created that's based on nature. Mm -hmm. And and rather than being like, how awesome is science? It's like, fucking scientists can't even make a wave. <laughs> yeah, right, right, <laughs> exactly. Look how long it took them to figure out flight. And God got that shit on the first try, I assume. <laughs> <laughs> right. So it's, this is the part with Kelly Slater, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Where his team makes a, an artificial wave. Right. Yes. yes. So is he saying that like water can't have shapes unless someone invents all of geometry first? Like what the fuck is he talking about? <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. So the argument he's presenting here is he's like, look, this professional server had a whole team of scientists trying to make a wave and it took them all this amount of time, but they couldn't even make the water on their own. It's like, yeah, they could have, but there was already existing water. So they used that. But, but, but his point is basically like it took all these scientists all this time to make this one tiny little pussy of a wave. Think about how many God makes every day. That, well, like, maybe a law, but not Christian. God. I've heard a law makes waves, like three levels of them, whatever. And also, Ray at no point points out in this, like, oh, look how great the earth is. He's never like, ah, and look at this eyeball eating bacteria that crawls <laughs> right. into your brain and the fucking frozen tundra that you can only be on for 30 seconds and then you freeze solid or your teeth that fucking kill you. Like, well, you never bring, like, he constantly brings this up. And you must imagine one of these teenagers at some point was like, oh, dude, what about AIDS? And he's like, right, yeah, we can get to punishment in a little bit. I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. <laughs> yeah, he's not going to avoid the subject, is he? <laughs> but instead, at this point, we get what I can only describe as a fun things to do in Nebraska commercial. <laughs> yeah, he's, he transitions from things God made into F1 sports cars and dogs doing obstacle courses. <laughs> That's literally in there. Like this is a montage of things. That is the connective <laughs> tissue in this mo montage it is that they all represent things that can be seen or done. This part was awesome. <laughs> So many things like happening. Oh. I want a so stock cool. footage of Heath running through the obstacle course right behind the dog. I can do it too. I can do it too. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. Well, I was pretty good at that. I thought. <laughs> Slalom like a motherfucker. Well, I guess random stock footage they hadn't used yet is the closest thing we're gonna get to a transition. So we're gonna call that the end of Act Two and pause for a much needed break. But before we do, let me give Act Three the hard sell here. Can nothing create everything? Why are there still monkeys? Well, then where do you get your morals? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the impolite berating that caps off the atheist delusion. Hey, fellas. You want to be in a movie? Uh, sure. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, I'm Ray. Who are you guys and what do you do? Uh, okay, I'm Heath and uh, this is Noah. Yeah. And we produce a couple of atheist podcasts for a living. Ah, well, that was fun. Thanks for your time. Hi there, fellas. You want to be in a movie? Sure do. Yeah. Yeah, yep. So, I'm Ray. Who are you guys, and what do you do? Uh, I'm Heath, and he's Noah. Mm -hmm, Noah. And we work at a, at a uh, Chick-fil-A. Wait a second. You sure you aren't the last two fellas except with mustaches and glasses? 
We um, are sure of that. Yes, we yep. are not nope. those. Okay, same. okay. Nope. Just gotta be sure. Devil tries to trick you. So, are you two atheists? Uh, we, mm-hmm. we are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. All right. So, how do you explain this book here? The you you brought it here. Exactly. The, exactly. The so, um, I, uh, do you masturbate to pornography? Uh, why are your hands so deep in your pockets right now? Get stolen and answer the question. Do you masturbate to porn? Yeah, uh, yes. yes. Yeah, you love porn, don't you? Don't you? I, I, yeah, I it's, do. It's wonderful. Don't you see how that proves Jesus died for your sins? Um, I do not. Nope. No. no? Not even a little? Ah, doesn't matter. I've got you on camera saying yes, I do, and yeah, that's all I needed. Have a good one, fellas. Hey, you mother... I'll lick you. Ray Comfort away. <laughs> <laughs> And we're back to the breakdown. When we last left our hero, he was vamping for time with a montage that demonstrated the category of nouns and verbs. But of course, <laughs> atheists don't believe in puppies doing obstacle courses or jogging on sunny days on the beach. They believe in dice rolls and devouring the flesh of babies. So we see some dice rolling because some stock footage costs more than others, apparently. <laughs> so the the argument we're going to get to here is, you know, like... Well, it's the same stupid fucking argument, but basically he pre- presents it this time as like atheists believe that it's just a coincidence that zero point zero 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 one percent of the universe supports life, and that life happens to be on that percent. <laughs> right. Uh, he also has this great moment where he describes us as uh, no matter how much they shake their tiny fists at God, and I wrote in my notes, I do not have tiny fists. I'm willing to prove that, Ray. I'm willing to prove that in several <laughs> ways. We have offered, we have made like actual, like genuine registered letter type offers to demonstrate <laughs> the size of atheist fists to Ray. And I still- grab whoever I want. You should see me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, basically th- this section is the argument from cows are made of meat and that's way too big of a coincidence it's unbelievable fantastic he even says here he's like he's like naming off basically he's going full quran right because he's going like there's wood to build houses and there's, then there's boats no fuck that's the other guys that's the other guys so then there's cows there's cows and pigs we're allowed to eat them too <laughs> at a certain point i thought he was just fucking with eli because he knew he was a vegan <laughs> oh, and bacon's delicious, yeah? And goat cheese? You remember goat cheese? It's so tart, fantastic. Oh, it is. You don't know what you got till it's gone, huh? How's that soy <laughs> cheese, you fat fuck? Oh, how's that going? <laughs> oh, you work out every day? You look like mashed potatoes. You look like mashed fucking potatoes. <laughs> Anyways, back to the atheism movie. That'll teach you to lick me. <laughs> I feel Jewish he- now. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah, that that that's more concerning to him than his latent homosexuality at this point. He <laughs> even says at this point that cows give us ice cream, and I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> did you Wait. see a cartoon maybe where <laughs> they were in Alaska and you thought that's how it worked? I oh god! And then of course we close this little bit off with him going, and how awesome is God to give us all of this plus the ability to reproduce heterosexually? Yeah, yeah right. exactly. <laughs> Also, there's a weird moment here. He he does the like, yeah, he let us reproduce. Also, did I mention how scientific the Bible is? Like, he just transitions exactly into that. Like, the Bible's full of scientific facts. Like, bats are birds, and rabbits chew their own cud, and pi equals three. And Oh, wait, no, 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 no not that stuff. Uh, Leviticus says you have blood. Well, okay, so let's, if you don't mind, okay, so first he goes full Bill O'Reilly, only he uses the seasons instead of the tides, you know, He's like, if it was science, don't you think sometimes it would be winter and then autumn and then spring and then summer, you know, (laughs) or whatever, just like clockwork, never a miscommunication. And then he points out that a lot of people die, which somehow bolsters his argument. Yeah, he goes back to that a bunch of times. Yeah. 55 million people die a year. Millions. Yeah. Millions of people die a year. Yeah. And they're designed to die. That's what I'm telling you. What I'm telling you is there's 54 people. That It's right on a clockwork. It's a fantastic thing. I'm super happy about it. 
And then we get to the argument of how many scientific facts you can find in the Bible that weren't discovered until thousands of years later. And I don't know about you guys, but I got out my pen and paper and went, mm, all right, let's have some fun with this. Oh, he's got some good ones. Okay, now I counted four. If I missed any of them, let me know. The first is that the Earth... <laughs> this is the best one. <laughs> ...hangs upon nothing. Okay, well, it, it's a skyhook. Everybody knows that, right? It's a skyhook. <laughs> you're saying you're a skyhook atheist? Prove me wrong. Prove me there's no skyhook. Yeah, right. <laughs> he does not. Right. Then he says, so, so that's one. That's the whole fucking thing. The earth hangs upon nothing. Not, it wouldn't, you know, you could describe gravity if you actually had scientific, but whatever. Then he says, and, and you know what? It says to wash your hands before you eat. That's a scientific fact. You should wash your hands. Also, and I want to interject here. Jew hand washing is not soap and water for 30 seconds to the tune of happy birthday. Uh, right. It is <laughs> cast a magic spell while you've got a weird jar thing and you'd like pour over your hand. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm sure this blew the fuck out of sheep herders minds to like put water on your hands that didn't turn you into a witch or whatever the fuck people thought back then. <laughs> but it's not hand washing. It's not it, the, the, the process. What's that thing that they use that like surgeons have to go through the process of X, that like super intense hand scrub that they have to yeah. do before a surgery. That's not described in Leviticus. It's like, and then you should put some water on your hands and have some kugel. <laughs> and didn't Jesus contradict that later? Yes! Wasn't he like, yes! oh yeah, it's no big deal. You can fucking not wash your hands. You have cum all over. It doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, me and Jesus agree on yet another thing. <laughs> well, it's crazy. Okay. Why do you wash your hands after you go to the bathroom? What do you, you shit on your hands? You shit on your hands? You're making me feel guilty. I don't want to wash my hands. I'm over here pantomiming washing my hands. So I don't have to be judged by you. Because I won't actually do it. I won't actually do it just because you guilted me into it, but I will pantomime doing it. <laughs> so, and then, okay, so as if this wasn't enough, he then says, eh, and the Bible says that the earth is round? And I'm like, Rrr! like there wasn't a jukebox playing, but one stopped anyway. Also not round. It's <laughs> No big deal. Well, right, right. It's not a no, sphere. It's, no, 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 it's not. But so I had to Google this to see what bullshit apologetic site Ray had been reading. So what this refers to apparently is that in Isaiah forty twenty two, they refer to quote the circle of the earth. There, there's another thing in I think in Job that's even worse, that's even less you know specific or whatever. But yeah, the circle, not the globe or sphere of the Earth. That's basically it. Now it repeatedly talks about the edges of the Earth as a literal place right. in the Bible too. And and just remember the last time someone handed you an orange and was like, grab it by the edge. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Doesn't exactly work that way. But yeah, but apparently circle of the earth was God's way of coding in knowledge that was not useful in the discovery. And that's the other thing, right? Like it, it, whether it's the Quran or the Bible, whoever presents this argument or whatever and says, oh, there was all these scientific facts that they couldn't have known about back then. If they had the knowledge, they could have given it to you. Right, They could have presented it in such a way as to make an argument in favor of it or to show you that it's the truth. If you have to retrodict it, that just either means that it wasn't there in the first place, ding, 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 or it means God is such a dick that he could have just told us the earth was round at any fucking point, but he had to sneak it in there in, what, in such a way that we wouldn't maybe be able to make any sense of it until after we'd figured it out on our own. Yeah, and what's so funny about this is, like, this is the only instruction manual that Christians are willing to give this level of benefit of the doubt with. If your IKEA manual was just, like, a <laughs> long, boring genealogy with some weird indications that it's okay to rape people, and then you were supposed to read into it how to build shelves, you'd be like, hey, Swedish people, you need to cut that shit the fuck out. <laughs> What are you talking about? It's so clear. You can make the Klunderschmerz. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, biblical scientific fact number four. This one comes to us from Leviticus, so you know it's going to be good. The life of the flesh is in the blood. How could they possibly know that when you cut flesh, that stuff that runs out of it until you die has the life in it? Yeah, but that's where all the life is. What the fuck does that even mean? What did they think it was just in there? Like, what was the counter idea that <laughs> Leviticus was disproving? Like, no, no, no. That's just like the juice. That's just in there. It's like coconut water. It's for hippies. 
And I really wanted somebody to just keep going with Leviticus here and be like, does it say anything else in there? <laughs> right. You right. want to keep reading for a second? Nope. <laughs> nope. That's no. where the book ends. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I dropped my Bible. <laughs> Can't show you the rest of it. And, we... <laughs> Shit. and now it's time to talk about hell. Uh, well, yeah, right. So with the argument from Vril still echoing in your head, we get the scary music where while he asks all of these atheists, do they think that hell exists? Most of them don't. <laughs> I reiterate, most of them don't. Uh, m- music note here. Fuck, there's wolves in this Tomb Raider level. I hate wolves. <laughs> Right, so so most of them are like, no, don't think hell exists. And his counter argument is, uh, but what if someone murder rapes your mom? Yep. And one of them's like, okay, I'm listening. I'm listening. <laughs> what? How did that help? What? Yeah. Well, okay. And so my, I, what I thought was. We were going for a, so you're in favor of your mom's rapist going free. But no, his <laughs> argument seems to be, well, why would you think somebody raping your mom deserves to be punished if there wasn't a God to tell you that? Yeah, it was basically <laughs> people deserve to be punished, you know, for murder raping your mom or believing in the wrong God fucking too early. <laughs> you know, yeah. all sorts of stuff that are all on the exact same level. Moving on. Yeah. How would you know murder rape is a bad thing? Okay, I'm a Christian now. That's that's what this movie is. <laughs> exactly. And if that's if, if if it's not quite getting home for you here, we do talk about the Holocaust as well, such that he can say, "Are you saying that Hitler isn't in hell, you Nazi?" <laughs> So, and then we go into Ray Comfort's patented, do you think you're a good person bit, which is where we will basically stay for the rest of the fucking movie. Now, if you saw Audacity or anything else Ray Comfort's ever done, you've seen this bit, right? This is where he asks if you're a good person, and then you say, yes, I'm a good person. He's like, have you ever said OMG? And there's, you're like, yeah, have you ever wanted to be bare naked with a lady? Yeah. Oh, well, then you're a blaspheming, lying Hitler. Hitler. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Then you're Hitler. You understand you're Hitler. Is what I'm saying. Well, but we it, both know that I'm not Hitler. So why why doesn't your God not know that I'm not Hitler? <laughs> like, not the point. Not the point. Those are words that you've allowed me to apply to you now. So now you have to act like you're Hitler. Come on, now, put it on I, my face. <laughs> put it on. Here's your little hat. Oh, uh, that's Charlie Chaplin. Here's your little Hitler hat. So now I want to point out to the audience, just so that you're clear that we didn't, you didn't accidentally hit the fast forward for minutes button or anything like that. We literally just went from, you remember Hitler, right? And the Nazis and just vivid descriptions of, of hanging children with extra small nooses so it would hurt more to, have you ever told any lies at all? Have you ever stolen music on the internet? Same yeah. thing. <laughs> LimeWire.com, brought to you by Hitler. <laughs> also, there's this amazing moment. Again, tiny little moments. Uh, so good. This, uh, he's talking to this one guy at one point and he's like, you ever look at pornography? And the guy's like, no, never. And he's like, you've never looked at pornography? And he's like, I have a girlfriend now. I don't look at pornography anymore. And I was like, yeah, she might yeah buddy. See this. I don't look at pornography anymore. You're right. <laughs> You and me both. Oh. <laughs> I also love the little fat 15-year-old kid that he gets where he's just like, you haven't looked at porn? And the guy's like, um, I, f- I feel like, no. No, I haven't. He's like, have you ever lied? He's like, yeah, just now about the porn. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> he also uh, comes across a Catholic at one point, oh, yes. which was terrifying to Ray. He goes, he goes, are you a Christian? And the guy's like, oh, I'm a Catholic. And Ray's like, oh, Shit, uh, uh, you need no. to get born again or, or you're fucked. <laughs> the Catholic's the, the fake one. <laughs> the answer is no. Just say no, unless you're like a me. What am I? Oh, God, I don't know what I am. Like, I couldn't really... T- am I a Baptist? I feel like I'm a Baptist. But I could also be a Pentecostal. God, I could be a Catholic. I have no idea what I am. I never talk about what I am. I just say Christian. Yeah, right, because obviously mine is the right one. And also, at one point here, when he's going through his, oh, well, you're a blaspheming, lying, hell-raising Hitler or whatever, one of the atheists, actually, who is so very clearly almost too stoned to do this, but not quite, he goes like, well, 
are you telling me that God made me broken and then got mad at me for being broken? And he goes, yep, that's what I'm telling you. Yeah, yep. You got on. Excellent. Great. We can skip right to the praying with this one. Seems like he's ready. <laughs> he's got it all figured out. <laughs> we also get that parachute thing, which his argument was uh, not becoming a Christian is like believing in a parachute instead of wearing a parachute. Right? Well, is that what he's saying? Yeah, but he comes back to this later, and his exact words when he comes back to it is, hey, when you jump out of an airplane, you don't want to just believe that there's a parachute. You want to have faith in the parachute. And I'm like, no, no, you want to no. have evidence that parachutes are a thing. Or can you just not jump out of planes, maybe? <laughs> yes. I feel like that's an option. No. That's atheism right there, yeah. yeah you, there you go. <laughs> and now, for some reason, again, in his own movie... Ray lets people bring up the problem of evil, <laughs> and he thinks it's solved because he's already established that those people burn in hell. Yeah, he basically says free the the solution to problem of evil is free will, but it's okay, Z's, because God punishes them. It, it would sort of be like like the Minority Report cops if they didn't stop any of the crimes. They were just always <laughs> waiting outside, like no. Nah. You fucking suck. You <laughs> saw all of that. <laughs> Come on. Time to go to jail forever. <laughs> That's what God is like. God is like a bad Tom Cruise. Think about that. Because Tom Cruise is a bad Tom Cruise. <laughs> Should convert it to not murderer. We could have yeah. stopped you, but yeah, you're an so. asshole for not converting to not murderer. <laughs> jerk especially if we had told you that we existed at some point and uh proved it yeah and then we get the argument for you can't stop yourself from blinking and you have to pee how could god not exist if you have to pee check and mate <laughs> i i don't he even this is this is something that he actually asked this is a paraphrase this isn't the exact question but he actually asked someone how they could be a specific height without god um, what is the other option? Yeah, you might change. You wake up one morning, you're tall as Heath. You wake up the next, you're Lucinda. Nobody wants that. Nobody <laughs> wants that. You got to buy different pants every day. <laughs> Gold is the one that keeps you a firm five foot four. <laughs> what the fuck? And see, you, you just blinked. The argument from two for flinching, right there. Staring contest with God. Go. <laughs> <laughs> he also points out that you don't want to die. You're not a dog. Dogs apparently do want to die. And this is where my wife left. She was like, dogs also don't want to die in the left <laughs> room. That was, that was Anna's line. You going to hell for thought crimes. She was like, eh, I've heard that, but dogs <laughs> wanting to die. No, no, no. He seriously did have this moment where he's just like, he's like, you don't want to die, do you? You're not like a cat or a dog. And I'm like, what are they? Does your dog cut? I feel like your dog cuts. <laughs> if you're not picturing Noah's, Wilfred Brimley cat listening to Johnny Cash's Hurt. You're not the audience. You know, like, I looked at my butthole today. He does love that song. So there's also this weird like semantic. I, I can't even I won't even call it an argument. This semantic thing he's where he's going like, well, you're a human being. And that means that you recognize your being. Therefore, God. Right. Right. Is it does that does that make um, sense? Right. Nope. Uh, yeah. And now we learn something that I was very excited about, which is that if you go to court and someone pays your fine, you can leave. Now, look, <laughs> I had sex with some bread at a grocery store and Andrew is trying to work that out for me. And I have learned the hard way. That is not true. Nope, it's not. No matter how much I tried to tip them. <laughs> yeah. So basically, like, just when you're thinking to yourself, if only someone had died for all these sins of mine, we learn that indeed someone has. But we have to get it from the, like, legislative point of view, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Um, we, we also get the argument that doing good things <sighs> doesn't matter. Yeah, literally, that's presented here. Raven Simone pops up. There's a little clip of her, and she's like, on her show with four or five other women. She's like, so religions is just all about being a good person, right? It's just that's like all the religions that they have that in common. And like two of the other women, the Christians on the panel, are like, no, actually, that is not how we run it. It's grace through faith. Nothing to do with being a good person. Doing good things does not matter in Christianity. <laughs> right. You, 
Maybe don't brag about this part. Maybe just, <laughs> again, cut this with Kraus part. No? It's, uh, uh, God, yeah, being good is useless. Ray Comfort. And I, I just want to point out that, like, really, look, if, if your formulation is thing X is more important than being a good person, it doesn't really matter how you <laughs> solve for X. This is a bad axiom. Yeah, thing X needs to involve things that keep you alive to be a good person if you want to do a thing X. It needs to be like breathing or blood flow. <laughs> Well, also, I love this because there's this bit where he's like trying to introduce Jesus to the conversation. So we get like him and his his man on the street interviews going like, would you believe me if I told you someone died for your sins? Can you tell me what Jesus did for your sin? Jesus blanked for your sins. Can you tell me what it is? And and all the people are like, oh, yes, uh, Jesus was the... Ollied? Is it Ollied? <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like it was a pendulum with a hacky sack, <laughs> like a pendulum behind your back, and then it comes like a windmill. Some people call it a windmill. There's also this amazing moment. He's he's doing the Hillary Clinton thing of like trying to make something work when he can. He goes, "It's called grace, and it's amazing." Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. It's like the song. Amazing Spider Man. Coming to get you. Coming to get you. Go to sleep. <laughs> and this is also this was the part that made me the maddest of this movie this is where he explains that like because the one guy's like afraid he'll be bored in heaven which is just the stupidest oh, objection to heaven ever like even the jews figured that one out we didn't need modernism to figure that but he's like oh no the harps will get boring and and ray's like no 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 heaven isn't harps it's here on earth and no one will get sick and no one will die and we'll just all love each other and stop murdering each other and raping each other. And I'm like, oh, so you mean Earth if you people leave us the fuck alone? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so far, we're crushing it on the not dying, not getting sick, not raping each other thing. You're the ones who fucked that up. Right. You're the ones who quote Luke and then let your kid die of maple syrup. I'm not. I'm my side's doing the work. Right. And so he's bragging that God's going to fix the problem of evil. In like ten minutes. Hey, well, right, what a fucking asshole. He even says at one point when he's when he's describing he heaven, he's like, uh, "No more kids getting molested." And I'm like, "Why would Don't you bring that up?" <laughs> exactly. And then we get okay. So throughout bring back this George Pell, bring him <laughs> on again. Show another clip of George Pell. Perfect. Idiot. So, and throughout this movie, we've been getting all of these, like, you know, the atheists that he's talking to on the street. And like I said, all but one of them is like 19 years old or younger. But the other one is this older guy who I am absolutely certain was a plant. Oh, most certainly, the, yes. The, the, the guy, because this is the guy that has the, like, I think I'm a Christian now moment with him. But, like, the guy, even at one point when when Ray Comfort is asking him, he's like, you know, how silly would you think if, if somebody thought that a book could just come together by itself? The guy actually says, well, that would be like a tornado blowing through a, 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 a junkyard and putting together a 747. That's the actual example he uses. So we're supposed to believe that that guy hasn't read the literature on bullshit creationism. Right, but yeah. it's, it's it's not just him. Literally everyone is now like, I'm no longer an atheist. I'm no longer an atheist. I'm no longer an ape rapist. No, no, you're supposed to say ape. <laughs> oh, no. Whatever ends this conversation, just give me right, my sack yes. back, bro. Just give me back my longboard. I'm going to get hit by a car. <laughs> yeah. We have a friend who gets hit by cars. <laughs> yes. Yeah. If I'm summing up his argument in this section, it's basically... Did, uh, did I, Ray Comfort, totally win this argument and explain how, um, the fact that books are binded makes me win? And it's yes. just like, yes, yes, God's not dead. Yeah. Surely alive. <laughs> I'm going to the right. Newsboys concert. And I just wanted so bad for somebody to be like, okay, uh, no, I think you're right. I'm going to pledge allegiance to Muhammad. Oh, yeah, now. <laughs> right. Oh. Also, he instantly turns into my mom, which is my mom's like, you need to go to the doctor. And I'm like, I'll do it. And she's like, when are you going to do it? And I'm like, oh, <laughs> mom. <laughs> I was just being nice by saying I was going to do it. I'm not even gonna. What's Wednesday look like for you? I got a recording every day. Every I, day uh, forever. It's so funny. I wrote the exact same thing except for instead of my mom, it said my Eli. So, <laughs> and, But I, I just want to point this out, okay, because I have never seen this outside of a Ray Comfort movie, and I have never seen a Ray Comfort movie without this. 
In every movie he does, there is a montage of people telling him he makes sense. <laughs> yep. Right? Like, he, he, he and, and, and not volunteering that information, just agreeing with him when he says it. Because there's this whole montage of people going like, he's going like, now, did the stuff I say just now make any sense? And everyone's like, uh, I'll be, okay, yes. Like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But Ray yeah, Ray. yeah, and clearly the old guy is going to be Christian now because um, he thinks Ray is smarter than the average bear. And I, 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 <laughs> I, I love to because the guy at this point he goes like, you know, you're a perfect stranger. How could you care so much about me? And he goes like, well, I'm a Christian. We're based on love, not like some of them other religions. Not oh. gonna not gonna name any names, but it rhymes with Muslim. <laughs> erty, erty Muslims. Yeah, not saying anything. Just saying, you know. If you would, uh, band triggers, if you will. You know. <laughs> the Does that count as too far? I, I feel think like that they went too far too listening far. to it. So <laughs> <That's> t- <laughs> I forgive myself. <laughs> In Scotland, and now you're just you're constantly <laughs> hurling. He doesn't know where Soho around. is. He was like, "Unbelievable!" We're, whoa, and you didn't go know north, where Soho and I was. was it's embarrassing. And for you everyone at this point. believes. Are you not on embarrassed Facebook, that you're keeping you're keep commenting talking, on it? You're going to just keep talking about it. I, I would and be every time you tweet about it. It makes me I'd be very ashamed. It's fine. I got the last word. So now everybody agrees <laughs> to go to church because anything would be better than continuing this conversation. <laughs> They're like, they're all like, he's like, can I pray with you? And they're like, this is the last thing though, right? This is the <laughs> last. And then I get to go and not feel like an asshole. It's like eating with your aunt, your crazy religious <laughs> aunt. She's like, I just want to say grace. And you're like, cool. But we get to eat afterwards, right? You're not going to do like a thing. We, it's, it's you talk to your friend and then we all get to eat. Oh my God. What if all of these people were male prostitutes? Right, like, just hear me out. Okay, I mean, there was a couple of women, but it was mostly it was mostly like young guys who looked like they had drug problems, you know. And and what if all of them had just been he'd have hired them all through a service, through an escort service, and they're like, when do we fuck? I am gonna, I'm like, I'm, I've, I am, I've, I've steeled myself for sucking your cock at this point. I don't know how longer, I, I, how much longer I can hold on to and that now feeling. I'm, now I'm looking forward to sucking your cock. Literally, I just want you to know. <laughs> I had a congressman choke me to death. Like, I died. I died. And then he zapped me back to life yesterday. And that was way better than this. So, if you could put a bag over my head and call me your dad's name, we could get this thing rolling. I've got some meth to inject. And I love, too, that, like, the, the, the guys that, like, let him pray with them, like, his prayer is like, Dear God, Help these people be as awesome as me. Yeah. <laughs> really, Essentially. It is. Like, let him be a Christian. Let him grow a sweet, sweet beard and wear Ray-Bans in public and inside. Sometimes inside, because everyone knows you're like a cop. You're like a cop for souls. Yeah. <laughs> amen. Say amen, Augustus. Uh, amen. Amen. <laughs> Can I have my burrito back now? Later, Augustus. <laughs> Gotta convert it first. Yeah, so now we say the same stuff some more, but this time in Sybil Shepherd focus. You know, like, uh, I, I love to, the, the, he's got this line, like, where he's, like, quoting from the Bible, and he's like, hey, look at that. The Bible also said delusion. How would the Bible have known we were going to name our movie that, huh? Ah, oh, that's, <laughs> I, there's no way back then we hadn't even yep. decided. We haven't even got the website. Yep. And then a rando comes out and tells you that you can get these DVDs for a dollar. <laughs> That's really it. I, I want to point out again, this is a free video on YouTube that at the end says, we will sell you this thing cheap, too. <laughs> <laughs> but see, like but like everything else Ray Comfort does, this is when it reveals itself to have just been an infomercial, right? This whole thing is just a way to sell you the four-hour course with Ray Comfort on how to convince atheists to stop being atheists like he did in the movie. No, it's just Ray Comfort slap-chopping bananas. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> oh, we need to do that four-hour course. <laughs> we need to do that four-hour course. That might have to be a mini-series. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm going to pay the full dollar. Oh, shit. <laughs> 
So okay. Deep. So we're going to keep the clothes short and sweet, guys. Um, the the advertising for this movie said atheism destroyed in one simple question. So are either of you still an atheist at the end of this? Um, well, I'm certainly not giving up porn, so uh, denial it is. <laughs> it's decided. And well, Eli? Uh, well, we never talk about it on the show, but I really believe in energy and the fact that we're all connected. <laughs> I've just sort of been, you know, it's the title of the show. We're all cool with that, right? We're all cool. With that. I love. You guys are looking at me weird. And I can't believe that we didn't bring this up at all in the review, but I love that the argument that Ray like bases his entire worldview on is that most people would sacrifice the concept of living forever for porn. Now, I know maybe most well, of the people on this call would do that. <laughs> I've, I've got some good stuff. Eli gave me like a whole <laughs> library. Good stuff. Anyway. All right. One last question. Are you guys still fornicating, blaspheming, lying, stealing idolaters? Oh, and proud. Awesome. Um, uh, I am not. I'm actually a truthful fornicating, blaspheming. <laughs> idolater. And I used to steal Except music. when you See? ask him about truthful. Soho. <laughs> or whether it's okay to stab a dead body lying <laughs> idolater foreshadowing <laughs> yeah yeah that's a uh it's a pre-callback again everybody loves the pre-callback so we keep doing them and well that does it for our review of the atheist delusion that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to tease you over next week's selection so eli tell us what's on deck holy man undercover and holy man <laughs> undercover, am I ready for this shit, dude? Like, it's been a rough month, honestly. Like, the movies we've watched have been really, really fucking rough. And this is exactly what I need. Yeah, it is all the terrible of, like, late 90s, early 2000s, wacky schmacky comedy <laughs> with David A.R. White's racism. In multiple roles. Yeah, oh. in multiple. He, he, Eddie Murphy's this yeah. as an Amish boy come to LA to save souls and his wacky drug addicted uncle who's trying to make it in show business. Fantastic. It's the nutty professor at Liberty University. I'm very excited. <laughs> The, the nutty proselytizer. Yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> exactly. So with the nutty proselytizer to look forward to, we'll bring episode 64 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to every episode. You can also help us a ton by leaving us a five-star review on iTunes and by sharing the show with all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed the show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist and Occasionally The Skeptocrat, available on iTunes, Stitcher, and wherever else podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. All the music used in this episode was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars and was used with permission. If you like what you hear, hear more by following the link on the show notes to this episode. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. Tiny kangaroo down, sporting a tiny kangaroo down. Hey, Heath did it now. We're so here, was. <laughs> Eli's lying. Ray Comfort <laughs> went to hell for mind fornicating with Eli ever since Reason Rally, and Eli's lying about the Soho thing. <laughs> the old guy with the jowls did kill himself because of the atheism. All of the straight animals went on to live good Christian lives. <laughs> So I'm right. What are you guys and what do you do? Uh, well, I'm Heath. So, sorry, you want to give that one more time? So yes, who, who I do. You? So what, I'm right. What are you guys? He's like, we're, we're, we're gay lovers, right? We swim well, that's terrifying. what I was going to say. You fucked up my whole improvisation. <laughs> I mean, I'm on what species are you? I've heard that birds started watching my movies. And I try not to leave them out. If you know any birds that want to be in the movie, I want them to be a part of it. Feel welcome. <laughs> The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC, copyright 2016, all rights reserved.